Christmas. And so we are grateful that many of you have come through this year to, to be part of our Founders Day ceremony. The program is scheduled up on the screen and you do have a copy of it, hopefully. And so it will just simply run from here on without any introduction of any particular activity. All I'm going to do is ask if you would please follow my lead with regard to when to stand and when to sit. We will be standing for a fair portion of the time as we remember those who have fallen in the previous wars, but I ask you please just to follow my lead when we do that. Can we stand now as we sing the national anthem, during which time the stage party will come forward? Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to our Founders Day ceremony. A warm word of welcome to our special guests, members of the SGB, current heads of the campus schools, namely Mr. Cedric Pullman of Weinberg Boys Junior, Dr. Jane Wallace of Weinberg Girls High, and Mrs. Melanie Sholent from Weinberg Girls Junior. Also former heads of the campus schools, Mr. Matthew Thompson, president of the Weinberg Old Boys Union, academic staff, parents, old boys, and young Weinberg men, as well as those who are following this ceremony via streaming today. A special word of welcome to our guest of honor, Mr. Chris Lumen, class of 1977. He's the current headmaster of Marisburg College, and he'll be delivering the John McNaughton Address later on. Welcome to you all. Our Founders Day plays a very important part in our Heritage Week, which culminates in the Old Boys Dinner and the Sachs Fixture on Saturday. These are the occasions that we truly celebrate during Heritage Week. We are also very grateful and celebrate our founding headmaster, John McNaughton, who was appointed as the first headmaster of the new Weinberg established school, which was publicly opened on the 1st of July, 1841. Over time, the emphasis of our Founders Day has not been on only celebrating the establishment of such a fine school, but also on remembering those associated with our school 
who have devoted their lives in building and developing our school into such a fine institution. We celebrate current and previous generations of boys, parents, teaching and support staff, and other benefactors. However, we still remember those boys who have lost their lives in battle and who could never reap the rewards of being educated at this fine institution. One is reminded of those old boys who have died in World War I and World War II when walking through the memorial gates and seeing the copper plaque bearing their names. In the past, many schools, including Weinberg Boys High, have remembered these names during their Founders' Day ceremonies. However, during the past two years and due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many schools might have lost this tradition, even though the act of remembrance has strong South African roots. To many, the remembrance of the war dead in South Africa is a lost pastime and often tainted by the politics surrounding the conflict. The following questions must therefore be raised. Firstly, must these names on copper plaques still be remembered by institutions? And secondly, what is the relevance of a Founders' Day ceremony in a modern day society? Many of you present here today have never and probably never will experience the ravages of war. Many of you will also probably only take notice of these copper plaques if you have been affected by wars, perhaps by losing an extended family member a long time ago. To many of you, the reading of those names will therefore bear little significance. However, there's an old saying among troops in militaries across time and cultures that we don't leave anyone behind. It is one of the basic pillars of what the army calls the warrior ethos. This explains the band of brothers or sisters phenomenon we have all heard of. This resembles our own slogan here at school, namely brothers in an endless chain, which is why so many old boys return to school during Heritage Week. Now this warrior ethos can perhaps explain the first question that I've posed, namely, must the names of fallen soldiers still be remembered by institutions. You see, I'm of the opinion that the warrior ethos also applies to the memory of all soldiers, and not only to the names of those soldiers who actually might have perished in a war. It is, in other words, very important to be reminded of those young Weinberg men as a collective who have gone before us and who have sacrificed their lives or their youth even though it be perceived as lives or youth being lost in the futility of war. Perhaps the bigger point is that we should be remembering the individuals who died rather than the ideology that sent them to war, often unwillingly. Soldiers die in battle fighting for their lives and those of their comrades, and not for the preservation of the regimes that sent them necessarily. Remembering those who died in times of conflict could well be part of distant historical events. However, the lessons of camaraderie and selflessness should not be forgotten or brushed over because a new social order finds them uncomfortable. They speak of the very values that we need to install in our students, namely pride, honor, respect, and selflessness. This brings me then to my second question posed earlier, namely, what is the relevance of a Founders Day ceremony in a modern day society? The concept of never leaving a soldier behind also pertains to those not associated with the military. It means that anyone who is part of your team, group, organizational school should know that their companions have their backs whenever they put themselves at risk. Being part of a team means more than simply working together to achieve an established goal. It means banding together and looking out for one another, to stand in harm's way yourself and to protect them from danger. 
Of course, this danger can mean anything from a threat to life and liberty, but also a threat to the rights of others, their social status or reputation. In this ceremony, we also remember and acknowledge a painful period in our history when people of certain races could not attend this wonderful school. Fortunately, many of their descendants attend our school today and are present this morning. We should therefore look beyond the names that are inscribed on the plaque at the memorial gates and also take a decision to remember to protect the rights of those who also wear our blue blazer, but who might be a minority group or perhaps previously oppressed and disadvantaged or socially frowned upon. I truly believe that this is the true meaning of Founders Day in this modern age that we live in. I thank you.
Bible reading. Let us now praise men of renown and our fathers in the generation. The Lord hath wrought great glory through his magnificence from the beginning. Such as have borne rule in the dominions, men of great power, and endured with their wisdom, shewing forth in the prophets the dignity of prophets, and ruling over the present people, and by the strength of wisdom, instructing the people in most holy words. Such as by their skill sought out musical tunes, and published canticles of the scriptures. Rich men in virtue, studying beautifulness, living at peace in their houses. All these have gained glory in their generations, and were perished in their days. They that were born of them have not left a have left a name behind them, that their praises might be related. And there are some of whom there is no memorial, who are perished as if they had never been, and are become as if they had never been born, and their children with them. But these were men of mercy, whose godly deeds have not failed. Good things continue with their seed. Their posterity are a holy inheritance, and the seed hath stood in the covenants. And their children, for their sakes, remain forever. Their seed and their glory shall not be forsaken. Their bodies are buried in peace, and their name liveth unto generation and generation. Let the people shew, shew forth their wisdom, and the church declare their praise. Thank you. God bless Africa, for she is the seed of humanity, and I am the future through her. When her roots sprout, I am born, and as her leaves unfurl, I grow. When her branches spread, I learn, and as her flowers bud, I bloom. God bless Africa, for she is the fire of creation, and I am transformed through her. When problems loom, I am challenged, and when solutions hide, I search. 
When suffering strikes, I ache. And when the relief calls, I answer. God bless Africa, for she is the tree of life, and I am alive through her. When her roots are dry, I thirst, and when a trunk is cut, I bleed. As the seasons turn, I change, and as the fruits ripen, I flourish. Now is the time of year when the members of Weinberg Boys High School pause to remember the old boys of the school, whose headstones are scattered in military cemeteries in distant lands. It is gratifying to know that they have not receded into the faceless anonymity of the distant past. Please bow your heads while I give thanks for their lives. O oh Lord God, help us to remember all the old boys of this school who have given their lives in times of war so that we may live in peace and enjoy our lives. Grant that we may be worthy of their sacrifice. We give you thanks for their lives, for their example, and for their courage. O oh God, who gives us so much, give us one thing more, a grateful heart for the sacrifices of those who did not return. Grant that the boys of this school may live out there today and that their lives will enhance our tomorrow. Amen. Roll of Honor, in memory of former pupils of Weinberg Boys High School who fell in wartime conflict. The inscription reads, at morning and evening we shall remember them. In World War I, 1914 to 1918. J.B. Abrahams, E.J. Brody, A.K. Carstens, W.A. Carstens, B. Cohen, G.T. Cornwall, R. Duncan, C.H. Elliott, D. Elliot, E. Elliot, T. A. Fulby, W. J. Fish, 
M. S. Fox, H. T. Garrett, C. L. Giddy, C. C. Gordon, R. L. Graham, E. M. Greenwood, H. L. Harcourt, E. W. Hitchcock, C. E. Horn, K. T. Howard, J. C. Herlin, D. B. Hudson, N. Keppel Jones, B. Leek, C. Loxton, C. R. Lukes, J. R. Martin, J. H. McKnight, E. J. Moles, W. H. Molner, G. V. Noakes, J. E. Poole, E. G. Powell, W. Prince, C. H. Salman, R. O. Schwartz, G. G. Scott, S. Scott, R. R. Short, W. Solomon, W. I. Thompson, C. A. Vipen, J. E. Waters. Rand Rebellion, 1922, W.A. Kirsten. World War II, 1939 to 1945, E.C. Adams, A.J. Bates, R. Beckwith, R.B. Bull, C. Boucher, J.F.L. Bernard, G.S. Cartwright, G.F. Cutting, R. Daniels, J.S. Dulbridge, I. Difford, A. Dubber, A. Earp Jones, C. A. Friedlander, J. G. Graham, A. Haft, K. Jacobs, H. A. Job, G. Josephson, A. Kahn, N. Cog, L. Coppet, D. Langton, F. Lo de la Rey, P. Marsitan Smith, D. McIntyre, G. B. McMillan, H. Miller, L. F. Moorman, J. S. Parsons, I. L. Posner, J. Ritchie, F. Scrimgauer, Q. Scrimgauer, J. Setscorn, R. Steveni, D. Tattersall, J. Tom, J. H. Thwaites, S. M. Upton, E. Fanshada, P. Fafat, B. Watson Smith, C. Wheeler, W. R. White, N. F. Wilkinson, D. Williams, E. Wise, R. A. Wittenberg, L. Wood, Border Conflict, D. Barry Smith, G. Bricknell, R. Davies, N. Pattenden.
It is always a great privilege to introduce a guest speaker, but today it is an even bigger privilege for me and a really special occasion to introduce Mr. Chris Lumen. Chris and I are not only friends, but our friendship goes a little bit further because when you've scrummed down in the front row with each other and against each other, then that friendship goes a little bit deeper. Chris is an old Weinberg faithful. He started in grade one at Weinberg and he matriculated at Weinberg. He matriculated in 1977 as the deputy head boy. He played first team rugby and he played first team cricket. But before you all think that he's just a jock and a rugger bugger, he's also very into drama and he loved the stage as a schoolboy. And there's actually a trophy at Weinberg named after him the Lumen Cup for contribution to drama. I'd also like to welcome Greg Brown here today, who was in the same matric group as Chris. Um, they've stayed lifelong friends, and there's also the Brown Cup for Best Actor, named after Greg, who is now the headmaster at Bishop's Prep. Chris was also a teacher at Weinberg Boys Junior School and a teacher at Weinberg Boys High School, so he really is an old faithful. He was at, he's taught at Queen's College, Chris and I played rugby together at UCT. Chris and I have played against each other, Chris playing for Villagers, myself for False Bay. Chris has played Curry Cup rugby for Borland and for Border. We coached together at False Bay. And I also had the privilege of coaching Chris's son in the 14A cricket team way back in the 1990s. In 1997, he became the enemy when he moved to New Zealand. But he taught at many top schools in New Zealand. He was an assistant head, a deputy head, and an acting head at New in New Zealand at many different schools. It was quite strange to hear that in his 40s, he started playing provincial rugby again in New Zealand. I don't think many rugby players can brag, have those bragging rights. He's also coached New Zealand schools. He's been an international coach for Guam and he's played regional cricket in New Zealand. In 2012, he returned to South Africa as the headmaster of Maritzburg College, and he still is the headmaster of Maritzburg College. He has completed his master's in education, and he's currently doing his doctorate in education. He's a trustee for the International Boys Schools Coalition, and he's also, <clears throat> he's also the trustee of the Association of Public Boys Schools of South Africa. He's passionate about drama, about music and sport, and about educating boys to become good men. He's married to Carmel. He has four grown-up children and five grandchildren scattered around the world in Australia, New Zealand, and Pretoria. It is my great privilege for us to welcome Chris Lumen here today. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and special guests, and most importantly, the men of Weinberg. Thank you for those kind words. Mr. Van Skalkbeck, it wasn't always so kind in the front row when we were playing against each other, but that was many years ago. And it's, it's really wonderful to be here today. I just want to share a little bit with you about yesterday, because I was very fortunate to be invited to the junior school yesterday afternoon, uh, yesterday morning. And it was a very special occasion. And as an old, old boy of the school and a former staff member of both schools, I was left with immense pride and of the younger men of Weinberg who are going through the rites of passage at the moment and to eventually to enter the halls at Hawthenden. Two of your old faithful peers, uh, Linga, deputy head Linga Shonga, Shugona, sorry, and, Pre and prefect Tristan Munz, did themselves and you very proud yesterday in their personal reflections on the topics, what makes a Weinberg man and my Weinberg journey. As I said to the gentlemen and ladies there yesterday, it's not very easy. Public speaking is not a thing that everyone puts their hand up for, and those two gentlemen did a fine job. Last night, I was not to be disappointed at the concert, and this added to the feeling of immense pride and joy 
as the musicians and singers raise the bar in the cultural pillar of the school. Well done and thank you to all involved and lovely to have them performing here again for us today. Right, so to focus on my, my chat to you on the topic Wyoming Boys High School then and now, I'm not going to digress off my notes as I did yesterday. I was very naughty yesterday. Today I'm going to be well behaved because these are the senior men of Weinberg. But the main purpose is to celebrate Heritage Week and this is done as you know in a number of ways and obviously the last two years we've missed out on something like this. And being an old boy we'd love to return to our school and reminisce of days gone by, sometimes very stilted and uh, blinkered visions of what really happened. And as I said to the young gentleman yesterday, I'm giving you a 100% history lesson now, 100% accuracy and factual. Today I might waft into the not so accurate and, and uh, real. But um, uh, it culminates in the wonderful dinner that it'll be on uh, Saturday evening. And of course, the refrain, uh, brothers in an endless chain, is something that really keeps all of us very tightly knit together. Sadly, I see that the uh, 15-man rugby is no longer permissible, and uh, understandably, some of those matches got out of hand. Uh, a number of teachers, such as Mr. Van Skalkwek and I, and some gentlemen might remember, and ladies, Mr. Mr. Schenk is also a rather large, not that we're large, but uh, Mr. Schenk is even larger, I think. Uh, we played in the front row against the, the school boys uh, when we were still playing senior rugby. And we used to enjoy that, and I must say, there was never any nonsense uh, at that level, but maybe further down, some of the gentlemen might have had a few beverages before the game and were not always behaving themselves appropriately. And um, I also remember being on the receiving end as a schoolboy when we used to play the Masters. There, you can imagine that that wasn't so funny. And, uh, and that was interesting to say the least, but uh, many scores were settled from both sides. We'll leave it at that. Uh, the characteristic spirit of Weinberg's community manifests itself in friendliness, manners, and mutual respect. In the spirit of the school motto, Superior Morris, every Weinberg man is encouraged to strive for greater heights and to never give up. And Weinberg is committed to being a boys only school, and that is difficult in the current times. Accountability, good traditions, partial care for our boys, our four pillars, and offering opportunities for all inclusivity and diversity. We have a, a former headmaster, Mr. Ron Algy, to thank for the introduction of the four pillars in 1984, which today could be considered to be the DNA of all one big men. The academics, the culture, the sport, and service ensure that every boy participates across all pillars so that after five or more years, obviously this starts in the junior school already, they leave as well-rounded young men equipped for all spheres of life. And that's not a cliche, ladies and gentlemen. The Founders Day ceremony, which has been wonderful to be part of it, is a solemn reflection on our past, honoring those who strive to ensure the founding, survival, and growth of our school since 1841. Furthermore, as we've just recently done, it is the opportunity to honor those who've given their lives for their country. When I was a pupil at Wambi in the 1970s and then in the 80s and 90s as a, as a teacher, the ceremony used to be outdoors with a strong military theme and Weinberg's famous cadet band was essential to the ceremony, leading our cadet corps in a march past the memorial gates before the formal national salute was taken on parade. It must have been early in the year, and uh, Mr. Mose and others might remember, because it always used to be very hot. And uh, our very successful marching cadet band would perform, and the boys would be all dressed in army colors from the grade eights right through. We'd spend weeks marching and training to make sure we looked sharp and smart. And uh, those boys who, everyone had to do it, but if the odd boy or two had a doctor's certificate, then he, he didn't need to do it. And many boys would literally pass out because uh, they're not used to standing for long periods of time. Fortunately, you gentlemen are all seated. You're very lucky when we were at school, we had to stand and listen to people, myself and older, waffling on. 
So you're very lucky. If you fall asleep, I'll be looking. I will focus in on you very swiftly. But so far, you're doing very well. So congratulations. I'm going to tell you a few little stories, though. Anyway, the most terrifying experience was guarding and protecting the perimeters of the old school during the turbulent times of 1976 with an unloaded .303. So I'm not too sure what we were meant to do with that .303. It was quite a large rifle. Maybe we had to hit the person over the head. There was no bayonet or anything like that. So we were all understandably petrified. Fortunately, no attacks were launched against the school. In those days, it was down Oxford, I mean Oxford Road. In the mid-90s, the Eurocentric ceremony gave way to a day in which we also celebrate diversity and pay tribute to those families who, as Mr. Skipper has alluded to, were prevented from attending Weinberg up until 1994 and the generations that suffered under apartheid. Throughout the decades, Founders' Days remained a very moving ceremony as it is today. However, I want to tell you another little anecdote. Some of you will remember this very clearly, and some of you not very fondly. I'm talking more about the people of my era. Up until the early 90s, uh, 90s all white South African boys who turned 16 had to register for compulsory conscription in the form of national service. Otherwise, they would be arrested. Furthermore, they'd have to report for what was two years of their life as soon as they finished the trick, unless they had proof that they were studying further. Fact. They would then do their national service after completion of their studies, which was a far better option, as they would, in most cases, be an officer and paid lots more money than the poor privates. I was one of those guys, unfortunately, who used to arrest people for being AWOL. AWOL means absent without leave or not enlisting, and I was a military policeman, or less affectionately known as a meat pie. Weinberg boys, I'm not sure if they were going to eat us or what they were going to do, but we were known as meat pies. So Weinberg Boys Junior School and Weinberg High used to be one school, but were finally divided into two in 1943, and Mr. Arnold Lowry became the first headmaster who served until 1971, the longest serving headmaster to date. As you know, I was very fortunate to attend both schools, and, uh, I'd, and I'd be considered, and Mr. I think Mr. von Skalkbeck said that, an old faithful. I'd also just like to, the boys, I know they were there yesterday, but some of you might not have been. The boys are, all the boys that are old faithfuls in matric now, won't you put your hand up, please? Yeah, thank you guys, and well done. Well done to your parents for keeping you here. I know things are not easy. And we had some legendary teachers in our time, and it would be a wrong of me or remiss of me not to acknowledge them. We talk of people like Mr. Blum, Mr. Connellan, and current staff members, Mr. Moser and Mr. Van Skalkweg, and Mr. Jeremy Peterson. I, I don't think he'll be here at the moment. He's the estates manager. Would be considered to be old faithfuls. I taught with both gentlemen and played sport, as you've heard. And uh, some of you might not know that Mr. Moser sitting here was a formidable fast bowler formidable. He had a black beard. No, he's not as tinged as it is now. And he would come in, we used to joke about coming in from the duck pond in, but it was literally just down the bottom end. And you just see him looming up and then he would come terrified. Everyone would run away from the stitch because he really just launched this missile. Uh, this is a staff team, by the way. And, and, and all the other schools would fear us. So he might look very calm, and, but get him on the cricket field. I think South Africa needs him at the moment. We're not doing very well. Mr. Moser, time for a, to be called up. I don my metaphorical hats to you, gentlemen. Well done. Sadly, I only lasted four years on my return to the high school after teaching at Queen's before going overseas to New Zealand. But I had the privilege of working with some of the teachers who taught me. And if you don't mind, I would like to acknowledge them. Once again, Mr. Blum, who was an Afrikaans teacher, teacher, was a fearsome man. Mr. Connellan, a legendary science teacher and a wonderful rugby coach and person. Mr. Richardson, who would have been here today, but he's uh, busy. A uh, history teacher. Uh, we did plays and whatnot together. Mr. Baxter, you'll see his name on the honors board for drama. And Mr. Lowe, and his nickname, I can say it now, was Plug Lowe. Um, and he was our metalwork teacher. And I want to talk a little bit about him because just to show you how different the times were. So he was my rugby coach in under 15 and under 16. And he was ruthless. We were super fit. And the reason why we were super fit, he chased us with a cane at practice. So there was no room for the props to be lagging at behind. 
uh, we, we were chased. Um, but he did it in a very caring and considered fashion. <laughs> what a privilege and honor that was, not to be beaten, but uh, to be coached by him. My love for teaching music, drama, and sport had its foundation here through wonderful mentors, as I've mentioned, Forbes Smith from the primary school, Jan Ustes and John Baxter, Ray Conlon, Shorty Lennox, and he was short, he was a deputy headmaster. Um, uh, he was a math teacher. And I've never had it before that he would apologize when he used to hit you. He said, I'm really sorry, and he hit you, you know. And I said, well, carry on, sir, if you're feeling sorry about it. You know, let's have another one. And he did say that, it's a gospel truth. No lies today. Keith Richardson, Plugger, and Neil Crawford, who then went on to be head of uh, Wonderful School in Gray, amongst others. I was truly blessed. In 1921, the school prefect system was introduced with Mr. Eddy, G.H. Eddy, and a well-known Eddy family. And I see a couple of the family here today. Wonderful to see you as its first head boy, and he's still functioning well along with the RCL today. In 1922, the school badge, as it is today, was adopted from the Weinberg Musical Coat of Arms. And in 1924, the four original schoolhouses were introduced to Vall Roads, Wellington, and Van Rivik, with Wellington, the boarding house, being added in 75. As part of the Weinberg School's commitment, as some of you would know, during 2017, this debate occurred and renaming of the houses, uh, which is what it is today, and they look lovely around the school hall with the four additional houses battling it out for the freed and the shield. Now we tell another little story about a fearsome headmaster. In 1964, and he was fearsome, uh, Mr. Neville Blackbeard, just the name was enough to start your legs shaking, was appointed as headmaster to sort the school out, as it were, as there were numerous issues with behavior and discipline, totally different to what it is like today, of course, and he proceeded to do this for the next 20 years. Mr. Mr. Blackbeard was mad about rugby, uh, who strangely enough also enjoyed, enjoyed drama, but was a strict disciplinarian and feared by one and all. Uh, there are still teachers who walk in, I walked into Mr. Pullman's office yesterday and I started shaking. Um, my reminiscences of Mr. Blackbeard. And then he told me, I won't mention the teacher's name because some of them are present. Even as a teacher, they were scared to go into his office, which is a bit of a worry. I'm sure it's not like that anymore, Mr. Pullman and Mr. Skeppers. Um, anyway, everyone had to play rugby. There was no debate about it, okay? Absolutely no debate. And he would literally go from class to class with a clipboard and go down the lists. And any boy's name who wasn't on the rugby said, where's your doctor's certificate? This is the true story. There were people sitting here in the audience who will concur. And then the boy would haul out a doctor, he'd be half blind and only have one eye and one leg and things like that. And then he said, right, you can play hockey. Because um, <laughs> those were the two options. And uh, if Mr. Richardson was here now, he would be nodding his head. Um, I'm going to tell you about Mr. Richardson shortly. And we had a friend of ours in... Um, in our class, his name was Neil Herringson, and, and literally his glasses were about that thick. And he sat at the back, he was a very arrogant uh, boy, a very bright, intelligent person. And he sat at the back like this. <laughs> Mr. Blackby said, and Herringson, what's your problem? And he just pointed his glasses, and he just shook his hand at him and moved on. Anyway, so that's what happened. And he would he'd literally check exactly what was going on. And there wasn't a lot of support from uh, Mr. Conlon, who was the senior deputy at that stage, because he was mad about his rugby. And he didn't want any of his rugby players going to play hockey. And anyway, a young upstart joined the school in about 1974, 75. I might have one year wrong there. I call, him a wh I call all my young staff whippersnappers. Uh, a former bishop's boy as well. I mean, for heaven's sake, what's going on here? Even worse, luckily we're not playing bishops tomorrow. Latin, a Latin teacher, right, and history teacher by the name of a chap called Richardson. Some of you have heard of him. He was later to lead this fine school, joined the staff in 75, and he fought the regime literally for years uh, to give hockey its rightful place. And I think all the hockey players here have got him to thank, and I know our hockey has been superb over many, many years. In true, maybe not so good this year, I know I've checked the rankings, but it's going to be better. <laughs> Tonight it will be better. Um, we'll, show, we'll sort the ref out beforehand. There's two of them now, which is a problem. Rugby, at least, there's only one. Um, in true, never say die, grit and determination. 
and the sport has been excellent, largely to his influence. Not to say he didn't have a big influence in cricket as well, but then we had, did have Jimmy Matthews. Now I'm getting to the, the rub of the conversation. During the 60s, 70s, and 80s, up until 1995, most disciplinary issues were resolved by means of the cane or jacks or cuts. I'm not sure what, what other names there were. But as a pupil in the 70s, that's how things were dealt with. And we had very few female staff. In fact, there were two staff, female staff at the time. One was Miss Russell, who was the librarian. And we were all petrified of Mrs. Russell. So the, the end result was no one went to the library to get a book out. And, um, and just it's not that she really did anything, but she was just scary looking. And yeah, anyway, I still shake when I think of it today. Um, Mr. Bank, Mr. Blackby controlled everything, uh, including the distribution of stationery and chalk and you name it. So I was in uh, Standard 7B in the old building, just across the quad, and we had an Afrikaans teacher who left us, and Mrs. Nokia was the headmaster's wife from Jan van Riebeck. We used to play Jan van Riebeck in those days. And she said to me, I happened to be sitting in the front because I was a well-behaved boy, she said, hey, Lumen, can you go to Mr. Blackbeard and, and get some chalk for me, please? So dutifully, I walked across to Mr. Blackbeard's office, knocked on the door. Remember, I was standing at 7, grade 9. Knocked on the door, and he screamed, come in. I walked in. He was sitting behind his desk. He always wore dark suits. Uh, and he had these massive eyebrows. That's what I always remember, these eyebrows. And then he always take his glasses off and say, yes, what is it? Something like that. He was a very aggressive, angry man, you know. Um, he knew my name because my mother had previously taught at the junior school. And my brother had been a model A student, prefect, plays, orchestra, all those wonderful things. He never played rugby, though. Um, and they actually chased him off the rugby field because he was so useless. So um, <laughs> there we go. True story. He deliberately ran the, in the wrong direction. He said, they said, what are you doing? Get up. And he just kept running. And he kept running off into the distance. And they said, well, don't come back. He said, I won't. Um, I said, Mr. Mrs. Nokia sent me, sir. What? He said, in an annoyed, agitated voice, got it from behind his desk. And the, the office is still the same now. Not, uh, it's more, it looks more colorful now, Mr. Coleman. It was pretty dour in those days. Dark and black and ominous. And he, he closed the door. And he hauled the cane off the back of the door and he said, bend over. And I, went, <laughs> and I said, sorry, what? But sir, don't, don't butt me, boy. I bent over and he smacked me too on the, on the behind. And I was like, I managed to pluck up, remember I'm in grade nine, I managed to pluck up the courage to tell him why I've been sent to him. And he responded nonchalantly, well then, you have two credits to your name. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the benefit of those two credits. <laughs> Today, he would be sued and lose his job, or both. Times have changed. In 1981, the school, as you know it, moved from Ellaville Road to Hawthenden, and the boys' junior school relocated to the high school, um, the old high school. Almost finished, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Jim Goodacre, vice principal at the time, penned the following line. Uh, it's now become immortal in the New Leadership School song, Brothers in an Endless Chain, which has been the mantra taken up by generations of Weinberg boys since. It has become the philosophy of guiding both schools as you negotiate the transition into a sincere South African school that embraces all cultures equally. As I reflect on almost six decades and consider my alma mater on where both schools now stand in the South African context, I can state unequivocally, that means without any hesitation, that our two schools and the boys and men are leading the way in producing young South African men who are transforming society and taking this country forward. And I refer back to the words of our founding headmaster, Mr. John McNaughton, back in 1841. And listen carefully to what he said there. The great object of this school will be to bring the blessings of a good education within the reach of all our community. I will be educating the whole man, physical, moral, and intellectual. How prophetic was that? I believe that Mr. McNaughton would be an incredibly proud foundation headmaster 
if he was alive today as I am as an old boy of the school. A line from the school song resonates powerfully at this time. From an acorn to an oak tree, Weinberg School has proudly grown. That Weinberg has certainly done and continues to do so. Well done to the staff and the men of Weinberg College. Oh, Weinberg, not college. Weinberg. <laughs> May Weinberg men continue to overcome difficulties for another 181 years, starting with the fixture versus sex this afternoon. First 11, you have the day off on Monday if you win tonight. And into the rugby tomorrow, and the same applies to our rugby guys. Finish strong and never give up. Super Amores. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Lumen, for coming all this way to speak with us and proving that no matter where you are or wherever you go, you're still a warm man at heart and a brother in the Indus chain, and we thank you. We'd like to give you a token of our appreciation. May we stand for the school song, please? the audience please remain standing while the stage party leave and then as soon as they've finished if our guests can please join us in the fishbowl for tea and once everyone's out of the hall boys you may then sit and Mr. Hull will dismiss you after that thank you Can our guests please leave and go through to the fishbowl now?